Hello, and welcome to Applied Imagery's Getting Started series. This multi-part series is designed to get users proficient in the tools and capabilities available within the Quick Terrain Modeler software. This chapter covers pro tips and customizations that will shorten workflows and yield standardized products for consistent deliverables. The topics are shown here. Let's get started by taking a look at some of the commonly used hotkeys and shortcuts. First, hold down the control key and use your scroll wheel to zoom in. Notice that we zoom into the cursor location instead of the center of the screen. Also, the minimap is interactive, so you can double click anywhere in the minimap and it'll quickly zoom you to that location. You can also right click and drag a rectangle and that'll zoom you to an overhead shot of that location. Some common hotkeys are hold down the shift key and left click a point or pixel. This will query that point or pixel and show you all the information associated with it. Measurement lines can also quickly be created by clicking the S key to start, and then left click your mouse as normal, and then clicking the E key to end. This also will automatically open up the height profile tool. Similarly, to create a line vector, click the V key. Click V, again left click your mouse to draw your line, and then click V again. And now we have a line vector created in our layer tree. Holding down the shift key, and right-clicking your mouse will create a drop line. A drop line creates a vertical measurement of any object in your scene. Holding down the M key and left-clicking drops markers in the scenes. And markers can be moved by holding down the K key, left-click, and dragging. I'm going to turn off the imagery and turn on my height color. And if I zoom in to a certain location in our data, click the Z key, and the Z key will re-ramp the color scale based on your view extent, as opposed to ramping the data across the entire data set. Hold down Control Z to go back to the normal coloration. Some more commonly used tools, hold down the A key and left click. This creates a bounding box and our flight surfaces. Click Apply. And now our bounding box with flight surfaces are created. And again, hold down the K key, left click and drag to move, and right click and drag to rotate. Holding down the I key and left clicking places stencils and graphics. I'm going to choose to add a graphic for an arrow, click open, and again hold down K to move and right click to rotate. Range rings can also be created through hotkeys. Hold down the R key on your keyboard and left click. And now you can define what range ring intervals you'd like and click go. I'm going to close some of these windows. And by clicking the Q key, I can create uh, bookmarks. Bookmarks are also used for movie creation as well. And each time I click Q, a new bookmark or placeholder is created. Simply click on the bookmark and that'll return you back to that view. In the US version, you can click and hold the L key on your keyboard as a vector line of sight. Straight line vectors will be created from each of your markers placed in the scene to your cursor location. If they're red, it means you do not have line of sight. And if it's green, it means you do. By holding down the L key, you can move your mouse and it'll show you those real-time vectors. Click the L key again, and they'll turn off. Clicking the F key on your keyboard will open up the model search tool, or find tool, based on your cursor coordinate. That coordinate is pre-populated in these windows, and then you can search your data holdings for any files that intersect that coordinate. And clicking the G key, G for Google, will automatically open up Google Earth. Your perspective will be changed to match that from QT Modeler. And it's a great way to sanity check the geotags in your data. Some additional hotkeys are accessible depending on your mode. For example, if you want to edit your data, go to Edit, then Edit Mode. As long as this toolbar is open, number one, it gives you quick access to some commonly used functions. But it also introduces a new set of hotkeys. For example, the Select Screen can be created by holding down the Control and the number 3 and left-clicking. Control, 3, left-click, and then I can draw my polygon. A list of all the edit mode shortcuts are shown here. I'm just going to clean up my scene a little bit. I'm going to turn off my selection polygon. I'll turn off my vectors as well as my markers. And a great way to customize your 3D display is by changing your color scheme. Simply right click the toggle height colors button and you can rescale your data by dragging these slider bars back and forth by hitting some predefined percentiles, changing the color palette itself here, or importing and creating your own. By default, QT Modeler will display data units based on the units that were defined within the file. 
I can right click my display units at the bottom of the QT modeler window in the status bar by right clicking and changing my display units as well as my vertical datum. And for all my measurements and units elsewhere, I can go to File, Options and Settings, and Set Display Units. Again, the default is going to be whatever units the data was collected in, but I can do on-the-fly conversion to meters, international feet, or US survey feet in both the horizontal and vertical. Display units for slope can also be changed from degrees, ratio, and percent. All of these settings, along with the color palettes, can all be stored in something called a profile. And that way you can quickly load this profile and share for uniform products. Go to File, Options and Settings, Save and Load Profiles. This will also include your toolbar, which can be customized here by clicking Configure Toolbar. When you're looking at a surface model like here, an important parameter to address for visualization is your lighting. Hold down the Control key, left click, and move your mouse around, and this changes the direction of the lighting source. You can also have greater control over lighting by clicking on the Lighting Manager widget here. When you're looking at a point cloud, let me turn on my point clouds and turn off my surface model. Lighting doesn't matter much, but your point size does. So I'll zoom in here a little bit, click on my Configure Point Size button, I can drag my slider bar back and forth, and that just makes each individual point larger or smaller. Note that when you're overlaying imagery, the point size itself matters, as you can drape more pixels of the image onto the point cloud. There are a lot of map elements as well. So I'm going to turn off my imagery and go back to my broader view. And I'm going to expand my special overlays here. Keep in mind, each of these elements can be left-clicked and right-clicked. For example, I can left-click my legend and change the size and font size. And I can right-click the legend outline item to change the background color. I can also adjust transparencies. I'm going to turn on my imagery. And right above the layer tree is an Adjust Layer Transparencies button. This is also contained within the Lighting Manager. And you can see the Lighting tabs here. I'm just going to click on the Layer Opacity tab. And I can change my texture imagery. And I can dial that back a little bit so I can see the underlying height information. Here's where also I can toggle the transparency and opacity of vertex colors, height colors, and more. I'm going to go ahead and click Reset Defaults and click OK. And finally, many of the analytical results in QT Modeler get put into something called vertex colors. Right now I have a surface model turned on and I have multiple vertex colors from analysis from slope analysis as well as helicopter landing zone. If I turn on my vertex colors and turn off my imagery, you can see the results of my slope map here. And I can blend it with the results of my helicopter landing zone by turning on my HLZ analysis. So you can blend multiple vertex color snapshots into one by toggling multiple line items on. And finally, a useful workflow tool is going to File, Batch Scripting. This allows you to graphically define a process that you'll perform multiple times over many different files. For example, importing a point cloud, converting the coordinate system, interpolating a DSM, and exporting out as a new file can all be defined here graphically and then performed on many files. If you have any questions or feedback about the content of this chapter or any other topics in the Quick Terrain Modeler, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you.